Hello, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for the final day of our Five Days of Merry Making mini-series. My name is Leah Zayner, I am your moderator for today's event, and Craftsy, National Quilter Circle, The Knitting Circle, and National Sewing Circle have all teamed up to provide a week full of live demonstrations and a bundle of festive patterns and recipes. Make sure that you download your free patterns and recipes by clicking the link in the description description. Now, if you've missed any of the live streams from this week, all of the videos are available for replay at any time. So go back, revisit those tips and tricks and all of the projects from this week of merrymaking. And of course, for today's live event, if you have questions, please leave your comments in the blue chat box below or in the chat on Facebook and YouTube. My job here is to monitor those comments, and if there are any questions that come in that are directly relevant to what we're working on at the moment, I'll try to slide them in. And then, of course, as there are any natural pauses in the tutorial, we'll get to some more general questions as well as time allows. Now, today's event, we have Mr. Domestic with us joining us. He's a sewing expert, crafter, designer, and craftsy instructor. Hello and welcome, Mr. Domestic. Thank you for being here. I'd love to say hi, have you tell us a little bit about yourself and what we're making today. So, hello everybody. <laughs> welcome to the party. So my name is Matthew, but people call me Mr. Domestic. So feel free to call me either, both are positive. So it's a thumbs up for me and I, Started sewing whenever my daughter Helena was born seven and a half years ago. And really, I was just trying to find a place to put my stuff on the interweb. And then fast forward to today. Now I'm a sewing expert and a craftsy instructor and a designer. And like y'all are here to watch me and it's really wild. But y'all are here, so thank you for coming. And I'm going to make... Dun, 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 dun. Hopefully you're here for this. If you're not... You can still stay, though. <laughs> this is a quilt as you go. Stocking! Really easy. It's going to go by really fast. Like, I know it looks, like, super duper fabulous and, like, really expensive. You know, because I'm a sewing expert and stuff. But, like, you can do this, too. And you're going to find out that you can make bombastic projects with the ease of a sewing machine and a little instructions that are going to blow everyone away. So I cannot wait to share this technique and this project with all of you. Are you ready? I am ready to go. Just a reminder, if you ask your questions in the chat box, I will feed them on through. And also we do have a team behind the scenes. I do see some technical questions coming in. Please feel free to include those as well. And our team will work their magic behind the scenes to get you some answers if you're having some troubles. All right, Matthew, let's get started. Okay. So there's a little wager, not really a wager, but I'm making it a wager. I'm going to put some money on it, like a quarter or whatever. <laughs> so there's been some, some questions and like curiosities about what quilt as you go is and what it is really ding, ding, ding. Leah was right. Leah, can you tell everyone what you said? Oh my. Um, well, I said that basically all of the aspects of quilting, so piecing together the sections, attaching the batting and the backing, and then running the quilting stitches kind of all together instead of going step by step. Yep, it's all at the same time. And through this technique, as opposed to a traditional quilting or quilting block or quilting project, where you see all of that thread, ooh la la goodness, adding the texture, you don't see any of that, so it's clean. Clean and refreshing, just like me. Let me get up really close. <laughs> so you can't see the threads. You can't see the stitches. One would even think that maybe that was like a panel that was printed, but no, you can do this too. So for those that, I don't know, if you had some really amazing fabric, like this fabric that I designed called Snow Day, that you really wanna highlight, that's when I consider doing quilt as you go, because I wouldn't want the thread to take away from this ooh la la goodness, but then thread might highlight it. So whatever, whatever floats your boat really, but today we're going to focus on this technique and then you can look around at all your projects and determine other projects you can use this technique going. So we're ready to go. Of course. Of course. Yay. So we need supplies. Hopefully y'all got the pattern is there's going to be a link to the pattern here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I pre-cut some stuff. I pre-cut this. It's not just a cuff. This is the lining. 
Hold on. Like that. There's two of them. Because if you've ever worked with like fluffy stuff or cuddle, and if you don't know the techniques and tips of it, it gets everywhere. And I wanted to avoid that crisis for this live stream event because <laughs> I didn't want to cough the whole time. Some tips in case you have never worked with it. Keep a vacuum around, like a little portable one. If it's a square or you know the shape, you can trace the shape out on it before you cut it. Put like a masking tape or a highly adhesive tape on the fur side. And then when you cut it, all of the excess fur goes onto the tape and not on your floor. So either one of those techniques, depending on whether you have tape in your house, would work to create no mess in your sewing room. So I have two of these. And as the pattern, these are extended beyond this template. So it goes beyond it like an inch, inch and a half. And you can estimate it just if you're making a couple or more than just one stocking, then you wanna make sure they're all the same because it will impact what the front looks like when we fold it over. Then from the template, I cut out the batting, like so. And this is what we're gonna use as the template now to put on our strips and sew from. The only thing with this is to make sure all of your stockings are going the same way. So for this one, ta-da, that's gonna be my front. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over this side so I don't get confused. And the other side doesn't really matter. And then you will need 10, two and a half by 12 inch assorted strips of fabric. Then if you wanna put a loop, it's an option to either put this little loop dangly thing or not. You need to have a four inch by six inch rectangle for it. Then an 18 inch by 20 inch piece of batting. And then this right here is fabric tape. I'm all about tape and glue and anything that can keep me from the extra step of sewing because they work awesome. And this is a permanent fuse. And really on the front, like who's gonna clock that and see if there's a stitch on there? It's not going anywhere. And I always say, if someone wants to clock the flaws in my projects, then they're not gonna be invited back to my house again. So that's, <laughs> we don't do that. I'm a 95% of us. And then you'll need a fat quarter of another, of another piece of fabric for the lining. Now, Matthew, I'm going to ask a quick question just for some clarification. Um, you were holding up uh, your lining, and Catherine was asking, does the sample have minky as the lining or just the trim on the top? Let's find out. Uh, I don't remember. I do know, but like drama, right? <laughs> that <laughs> reveal. Oh, see? So if you wanted to, it's a... Re how about this, y'all? This is a reversible stocking now. Let's say one year you want quilt as you go. The next year you want fur. Hey, we can do it. So yeah, I just found it easier to do that. But really, that depends on what you have. So if all you have is a strip of something, then you could very much just have it as the top or the muff and use like traditional little quilters cotton or whatever you have, even muslin for the inside and add it and no one would know the difference. It creates less space inside. But as far as I'm concerned, that means less little things to put inside it and no one will know. <laughs> <laughs> A great question. We've got all the tricks today. <laughs> always thinking ahead, always thinking ahead. Lots and lots of time to think ahead we've got. So let's get started with this one. So if you have the pattern, the first step is, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do is put on here, because I don't have two cameras, and then take one of these 12 inch strips. That's at a minimum. These are longer because that's what it was. And then I'm going to estimate like a 45 degree. If you are a perfectionist, and that brings you joy, I'm going to empower you to use a ruler just to do that. Look at that. I did it good. So, this should stay like so. 
Dun, 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 dun. See, it's on a 45 estimated degree angle. And that's gonna be the base strip from which we add the other ones. And now I'm gonna trim the excess to not weigh it down. And really you can start going up or down. It doesn't matter because you're gonna go in both directions. But now grab another strip. Ta-da! This is where the mysterious quilting as you go comes in. I'm going to put it on here, and then I'm going to sew all seam allowances for this portion are a quarter inch seam allowances. And now I am going to sew. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> like this. And I don't have anything underneath. One thing to do whenever you do this kind of quilting, make sure you clean your machine before and make sure you clean it after because the likelihood of there getting fuzz in the undercarriage is pretty high and you don't want it to negatively impact your next project. And I'll remind myself and you when we're done with that. So here we go. Are we ready to sew? Yes! That's what y'all are doing in the background, totally. We've got people watching from quite a few spots. I'm trying to pull some uh, locations for you. Deanna from Utah. Got a couple people, someone from Portland here. Catherine's from Portland, British Columbia. We are sewing, we are quilting, we are ready to go. Well, look at this, global experience we are here at Craftsy. <laughs> That's really cool. But honestly, I'm gonna have a couple tangents in this just so y'all know. Isn't it really cool? That right now, while most of us are staying at home, not seeing everyone as if we wish we could, that we get to create and develop online communities like this, it really, it's filled that little void in my heart and made me smile on the inside many times. So as always, super duper grateful for all of you. Grateful for Craftsy. Everyone stay safe, stay merry, stay happy, stay fabulous. Let's go. Yes. So, see, can you see the stitch? There it is. And now you just fold it over. You fold one of them over. Dun, 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 dun. If you have an iron handy, I'm using a fusible batting because it has just enough tack to keep it there. But then I also have my handy dandy seam roller that I keep whenever I do foundation paper piecing or quilt as you go. And then I just go bloop, 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 bloop. And I can move on to the next one without needing any heat. Also, let me tell you one of my favorite sewing notions of 2020. <gasps> this what? is my baby Groot. <laughs> it's supposed to be for air plants, but I decided instead to put some stuff in it and bring me some joy in here. <laughs> Why not, right? Okay, so now I'll trim. If you want to trim as you go, you can just to keep it neat and tidy. And I find that trimming as you go, when you're quilting as you go, allows you to use an accurate size of fabric that might be misleading if you don't do that pre-cut. Okay. So like so. And now I'm going to add the next one. Right here. Ooh, we have a good question coming in here. Uh, quote, Mr. D, do you have a quilter machine? I do not, so what foot? And how will it work on a regular machine? Well, this is Tony. Everyone say hi, Tony. Hello. Tony is my Janome M7, a non-binary machine. Uh, I did a video over on my YouTube explaining what that is if you were curious about it. But this is, this is a beast of a machine. But I've made this, my other one, Darth Vader is in the corner and it's like a standard base model. So, so did great. You don't need a standard machine or an elevated machine. For years I sewed on like one of the brother basics that I got like online for 200 bucks. And like, I didn't know any different, it worked. Foot, I have this foot on here. I use whatever foot I left on there for the previous project and then I change it when I need to quilt or something. But this is just, I think this one's an open toe, but like a J or a regular foot, 
any foot would work. I'm not using a walking foot. So if all you had was a basic machine and, a, and one foot and some thread and a needle, you can definitely make this. Great question though. I know lots of people had that out there. And then fold this up. And then now I'm just gonna keep going all the way through. And if there are questions you can ask me while I'm sewing, we'll have a Q and A at the end, but yes. I, can, I can multitask. All right, well, let's let you multitask through this one. Let's go next to a question about backing. Um, you could add a piece of backing to the quilt batting, right? Yeah, you absolutely could. Like if you had some extra, like not that any fabric is junk, but that's what I use for this. Like the, that fabric that you know you have, you don't want to throw away, but you're never going to use it in a project. You can do that and then avoid it. It would just make it a little bit bulkier, but it would avoid the mess inside your machine if like, not that I don't care about you, Tony, if you were concerned about stuff like that. Great. That actually is a question that came in from a couple viewers. So hopefully that helps you out out there if you're a little worried about keeping the batting on the bottom. Oh, and here's a fun one. Catherine asks, is Grover there with you today? Yeah. <laughs> Grover is, is, I'll go get Grover. We need Grover, right? We must have Grover. All of the friends are here with us today. Yes. I can't believe I did this without Grover. Here we go. Grover is my friend. For anyone who doesn't know the story of Grover, if this is your first time experiencing me, I'm sorry. I'm very extra. So just <laughs> get in for a ride. I'm very stream of consciousness, very authentic. Say whatever. And Grover, I have a seven and a half year old. And she has this owl, green owl named Hoo Hoo, um, that she's had since she was a baby. Like, you know, any kid has that like thing that if they lose it, they'll have a conniption fit, right? So she asked me if I had one of those when I was a kid. And I did. It was a Grover. So fast forward, I don't know, six, seven months after that, we were in Kohl's shopping and all of a sudden, she screams in the middle of the store. Had no idea. I was like, I need the hospital. There's something going on. I don't know what it is. And she said, Dada, look, they have a Grover over there. You have to get him. And then I bought him. And honestly, all of those feelings I had as a kid having him, it's like I have them now. And it's really cool. And that's the... Um, that's what I, why I love crafting and making stuff is it allows me to tap into that intuitive child thing that a lot of us push away. And so this is just another example and reminder of myself to allow that to run free and not let the voices of like grownups make you stop doing what you care for. Like, look, I've got my nails painted. You know why? Not because my daughter told me to, because I wanted some color on my nails. Right? <laughs> so it's just freeing. It's freeing. It's a nice reminder. So that's the story of Grover. Who asked that? Oh, uh, Catherine asked that. And we have a few viewers that are indeed experiencing their first event with you. And quite a few people are super excited and would love me to pass on. Roberta thinks you're a great presenter. Very enjoyable. Maya, it's her first time and loving it. So I have to say, bring the extra to the table. I think yeah. it's a big hit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Extra, extra. Read all about it. I have a shirt that says that. I'm going to put that in my merch store. That would be funny. Yes. Right. And then any other questions? Uh, Denise has a comment about your color choice. So sharing just reminds her of the wintry, snowy, warm blanket, hot chocolate, watching Christmas movies feeling. So I think we can all get into that. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to do with this. I literally started designing this fabric collection on a snow day, like before the, the year long snow day that we're experiencing now. So <laughs> you can buy this. It's a non holiday themed winter collection. You can get it. And any day you want to pretend like it's a snow day, just pull it out. And you're like, hey, it's a snow day. Get the hot cocoa. Let's watch some Netflix. Let's eat some pizza. Let's do it all. So look what I did. Teachable moment. Look what I'm gonna do now. I'm not scared. 
Wow. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> that was bold. All right, so what happened? I didn't measure it right because, and this is something I guess to look out for, I had it go to here. Ah. So I put it here, it was like this, but I didn't account for this excess over here. So when you're doing it, just make sure it hangs over on both sides to avoid having to do that. But I have to tell you, ripping out a seam like that, oh, it feels so good. <laughs> See, make the mistake and then enjoy fixing it, right? Yeah, but I would suggest only doing that with cotton thread. A heavy-duty polyester thread might be a different experience. <laughs> That's a good warning. I like that. Oh, Karen's got a good question here, too, for you. Uh, Karen just found you last week, so this is fresh and new. But what kind of batting is your favorite? It depends, really, because I use, I do everything. Like I don't, I don't just quilt, or I don't just do apparel, or I don't just make bags. So it depends on what I'm going for. Like in a quilt, I'm all about this fusible. It's an 80/20 Hobbs fusible because I based my quilts on a wall now, and then I have my iron in my hand, and I pin it on the wall, and I'll just iron it, and then I can roll it off, and it's good to go. And I don't have to worry about pinning or glue basting or any of that jazz. That eliminates so much time and so much headache. And I've been able to quilt much bigger quilts using that technique than I did before. Before I used to only quilt by check. And now I'll actually quilt some stuff on my own. So who knows what's going to happen. But for that, yeah. I also really like silk batting. Like for apparel or like droopy bags and stuff. It quilts really nice and it's um, it's got a nice feel. And I don't know, anything that has silk in it, it feels expensive. So that's oh, that. And who doesn't love that? Right? Oh, there's a lot of love out there for your Baby Groot uh, so scissor holder. And Thank Anya you. would actually like to know, what is your favorite brand of scissors? My favorite brand of scissors is LDH. I didn't even have to think. <laughs> they are a Canadian-based company. They, LDH, if you know what I'm about, my, my motto is um, spreading joy and positivity through sewing and crafting. And I came in touch with LDH even before I knew who they were. I loved their scissors because it was very handcrafted, made by a blacksmith. Like the blades go in, it, they're just excellent. But the LDH in the name stands for love, dedication, and happiness. Mm -hmm. And when I met them in person, absolutely, that's exactly what I felt the entire time that I was there with them. So it's like, and they're young, they're like in their 20s running a boss company. Like, I support that. So yeah, small, small business, right? Let's support that. All right. Grab those LDH scissors. Yeah. Oh, I have another question about a sewing machine here. This is great. Uh, so Rob says, we just bought my son a beginner machine at Joann's. Would he be able to do this on a small machine? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I'm, um, as Mr. Domestic is getting larger, um, I can't respond to all messages. But if you get it to my email, my assistant will make sure that I read it. So if your son has any questions, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to help and walk through. But yeah, like a, a, a smaller machine without much power even could do this. As you can see on the back, it's just some simple stitches. One thing I might say is not to use the fuzzy stuff. Use like a traditional fabric because it'll be a lot easier to sew. Because like the fluffy stuff and like silk, that's really slippery. And quilters cotton isn't. So that that would be my only like amendment to the pattern. But yeah, that's exciting. Yay! Hey, boys for sewing. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm going to take a little break from the question box and ask if you could review for us just what you've been doing for any viewers that might have joined a little bit late or just want a little review. Absolutely. So right now I'm doing the quilt as you go portion. This is gonna take the most time. Once I'm done with this, it's like wham, bam, we're out of here. Um, so what I do is I lay a strip on, like so. Let me cut a new one. Like this, it's a 12 inch by two inch strip. And then I'm gonna place it right sides together along the bottom raw edge. And then now I'm gonna sew, sew a quarter inch seam allowance along this raw edge, fold it over, 
use my little seam roller to make sure that it's good and then just continue. And that's called quilting as you go because you can't see the thread. And literally as I'm, as I'm creating this and constructing it, whereas this would traditionally be the piecing part of it, I'm piecing and quilting in one step. And so it's a lot faster. Great. We do have a couple people new to quilt as you go. So that sewing directly onto the batting is a new technique. Yeah, it's fun. It's different. And I'm newer to the de to technique too. So I have plans to do more. Like I even know people like quilt as you go, go blocks and then like put them all together later. It's really neat. There's so much to learn in sewing and crafting and making. That's what I'm finding. You never run out. Yes. Oh, and there are a couple of people that this is their first time trying the quilt as you go. And Janet even says, I was afraid of quilting as you go, but you make it look so easy. So thank you for these tips. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm trying to find an earlier question. It was about the fabric that were you, you were using. Ah, yes, from Tina. Uh, where can we buy a jelly roll in this fabric? Um, what you do is you buy yards of it, then you cut it up in strips, and then you sell them because they don't come in jelly rolls. But you can get fat quarters, and they, they have fat quarter bundles places. They have like 10-inch squares. AGF just started, which is who I do my fabric with. And then um, that would be good. But really, like something like this, you could use a fat quarter bundle. You can get it like a fat quarter shop. Just Google like Mr. Domestic and then snow day fabrics, and then you'll be able to find it. It's global, yo. It's everywhere. <laughs> There's also a shout out for your shirt. I think we love the frosty theme here. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Almost done, y'all. Oh, this means I'm getting closer to the end. How do y'all feel about it? Oh, people are loving this. I am saving a couple more general questions, so at the end of the project, we'll get to some of those. Awesome. There's a couple other people out here that have Grovers as well, so yeah. that's a big hit too. We need to have a Grover party group or something. Like we need to do it. It needs to. It needs to happen. <gasps> like a Grover Facebook group. I don't know though. That seems kind of like weird. I don't know. I feel like that'd be very niche. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is a good time for a reminder too. Uh, Mariah is just signing on. And Mariah would like a reminder of what the base layer is that you're using. I'm using an 80 20 uh, combination fusible batting. I love fusible batting. It um, works just enough to keep it in place for what you need, and then it washes out, and you can't tell that it was fusible. And what I find, since I'm limited in my quilting ability, I don't do free motion quilting. I, I think it's gorgeous. It's just my brain doesn't think that way. So I do straight line or grid quilting. And I find with the fusible, like whenever you go like this with the threads, there's always a pucker or a part that bunches up, but with fusible stuff that never happens. So that's another benefit of it is that you've got some snatched quilting if you do that kind of quilting too. One more, one more. All these questions are awesome. I know, it's really great to be reading through them too. We've got some people ready to use these for Christmaca holidays, so multi-purpose. I love that. Oh, this is good for now and maybe also later. Uh, can you expand on the quilting and adding batting on the wall? So when you were talking about how you use your wall, maybe not now, but in another video too. So is that something we can look forward to? Yeah, and I have a, um, a tutorial on my YouTube that I did for it. But um, yeah, like seriously, it's when you see it, it's one of those, why haven't I thought of that and been doing it this whole time? It takes away, like my back doesn't hurt anymore. I don't have to like, like get all creaky coming off the floor. Like agent, agent, it's not a joke, folks. Love it though. So this is done. Ta-da. Ta-da. And now... I can find the other one. Oh, here it is. I don't want to show you on my floor, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show it to you on the Instagram or something. <laughs> Not here, though. So let's use this fabric for the back. Oh, no, let's use this one. And so now with this, whenever you're cutting, 
the other side. This is how they're going to go. So this is the side that needs the fabric. Just make sure that they kiss right sides together. This is the front. <laughs> That's a great way to think about putting those together like that. Yes, they're kissing. That's it. I'm a PG experience, folks. Actually, <laughs> since I've been inside, I've elevated to PG-13. But here, I'm keeping it PG. Perfect. <laughs> Ooh, a good question about your silk batting that you have commented on a few times you like to use. Wow. Where would you purchase silk silk batting? Oh, they have that everywhere. Like, um, they even, I mean, I think I found it at, like, Joanne. Um, but I don't go into stores anymore, and I don't know when I'm going to. So generally, like, I get stuff I know off of Amazon, or if I know a small business that carries it, I'll search it out. But you can, like, go to Google. This is what I do. Like the truth of it. I go to Google. I'll type in silk batting or silk quilt batting. And then I'll push that little shopping button. And then some stuff comes up. And usually there's like an Etsy seller or a small business. And that's generally my preference. Because we got to help the small businesses out, right? I mean, yay for big like conglomerates and boxes and stuff. But, um, you know, the small businesses are, are attached to family. So let's help them out too when we can. Exactly. Oh, Shirley has a question about that fusible batting that you like to work with. Oh. Uh, do you pre-wash your fabric when you use that fusible batting? I don't. I don't. <laughs> Simplest answer. All right. <laughs> I mean, I'm, um, I'm not a rule follower, so I'm not, I'm not the quilty police. Um, you're supposed to. But really, since the final step in any sewing project is taking a photo for Instagram, then I want the fabric to look really nice. And so there's a chance of any like slight fading or like pilling that I don't want to occur for my fabric. And I found that most of the batting has a similar shrinkage, which you'll find whenever you look at it, to the fabric. And it's never really been an issue for me. And I'm the type of person that whenever I'm ready to start a project, I need to go right then or I'll go find something else. I don't have time to wait for like the cycles and the, the machines and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me show you what I just did. So the right sides together, they're kissing now. And now I'm just going to stitch up around the edge, quarter inch, half inch, estimate some, a third inch in between. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to I had to show off. <laughs> All right, while he's sewing, I am going to pop in a quick reminder that if you're having trouble finding that pattern, the pattern you can find a link to in the comments. So I mentioned at the top of the hour our magical behind the scenes helping out in the comments section with any technical issues. There is a little link in there for the pattern and it's also in the video description as well. So if you are just joining us and you haven't gotten your hands on that pattern just yet, that's where you can find it. And uh, we'll keep on rolling. Let's check back in with Matthew and see how that sewing went. How's it going out there? It's fine, the weather's great. <laughs> <laughs> Leah, you're a boss at this. Y'all give it up for Leah. Like she's oh. like, like she's amazing. Like, like phenomenal. 11 out of 10. You're going to make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. I'm a weirdo that whenever I, I like to focus on the positive. So whenever I have a thought of like positivity or something that I like, I'm that dude that will say it just because people hear the other side so often that it's like, if you're, if you're feeling someone, let them know you're feeling them totally platonically and stuff, you know, because my husband wouldn't be okay with that. True, true. Very true. <laughs> Well, now I'm doing something called scoring ah. right here. And this is on a curve. When it's a concave curve, because a concave, you're going into the cave. So when it's a concave curve, you need to score it like so. When it's a convex curve, which the Humpty Hump, then you want to create little triangles. I'll show you that but you wanna make sure to cut it on the inside of the thread, like every inch or so. And because when this goes on the inside, it all bunches up and you don't want it to do that, but here it just spreads out. So now, 
Ooh. Diane wants to know how you can cut so straight without using the ruler. You make it look so easy. Oh, we're not going to get real close up to this project now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, since, since I've been sewing, I dedicate two hours a day to it. So, um, yeah, my family is generous and allows me to have that time. Because if not, then I'm a different experience. So <laughs> uh, that's it. Um, but really, um, this is something y'all need to know also about me. If you're new to me, I'm a 95 percenter. I think I said this on the last time I spoke. I'm a, I, I strive for 95 percent perfection. I'm all about the process. I need the process to be joy filled. And I'm fearful that if you strive for 100 percent, at least me, then there's the risk of the entire experience not being joy filled. And then those emotions get trapped in the project. And then whether you keep it or give it to someone else, you remember those emotions. I don't want that. So I'm okay if there are some flaws. It's handmade, right? So, um, yeah, perfect isn't, that's not me. I like that. 95%. That should be a shirt too. We're filling, we're filling out your merch today. Is what we're doing. Are we taking notes? Are you taking notes over there? There's no one there. <laughs> so, see? I mean, really, if you wanted to call it a day, you could just fold it over and hem it and be like, hang it up, right? Mm -hmm. But if you want that fluff, because it's like, if you have the opportunity to zhuzh it up and add some fabulosity, why would you not do that? I'm about that life. So now I need to find the faux fur. <laughs> <laughs> this is real life. This is when you're crafting. I oh, found it. <laughs> you craft it around wherever you have it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that crafter maker sewist that pretends like, la, 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 my life is perfect or my world is perfect. I don't know where most of my stuff is, and I probably have at least 20 seam rippers in here, but I know where one of them is. <laughs> so now I'm going to do the same with this, stitch all the way around. So if there's a question, I can answer it in the time. Well, what was the step that you just came out of, and now what is the step that you're moving into? If you could clarify that, I think that'd be helpful. So I turned the exterior right side out after I sim um, sewed up the inside. I missed a part, so I had to go back and sew it again. Now it's right side out. Ah, <laughs> so it has a little touch. Yeah, I'm sewing the lining, um, or the inside that I'm going to stuff in there and then fold over like so. And this, I'm using like the minky cuddle kind of fabric, which is messy as all can get out, folks. But like for real, it's worth it. <laughs> All right, so that answers the extra sewing. And then Terry adds, I'm a 70 percenter, but hope one day to become a 95 percenter. Oh, you still graduate. I'm cool with that. <laughs> oh, we got to have goals, right? Moving up to that 95 percent. That's awesome. That's because like before Helen, I was born when I didn't have attention to detail. I was probably a 30 percenter. Like I couldn't make curtains. I made them for someone who used to be my friend, isn't anymore, but they still hung them on the on the wall. They were proud of it. And that's the thing of a handmade gift, right? Regardless, if it's someone that knows you and understands and values the time you put in, no matter what, they're going to love it, no matter what. And if they don't, send them my way. <laughs> and you'll set them straight. Oh, here's a good one from Helen from England. Oh my goodness. Love the quilting. How long do you think this would take if you are just starting out? I would love to make this for Christmas. So you're a new sewer or starting from the beginning would probably be the same. If you're making just one an hour, maybe. Yeah. Um, prep probably 30 minutes, sewing 30 minutes. If you're a 95 percenter, if you're a hundred percenter, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so totally doable if you are new to this you can still get it done by the holiday. because you don't even have to do the quilt as you go part like you get some boss fabric put it on the front you can do this in like 10 minutes this could be a 10 minute project i like that idea getting right into it 
Yeah, and I think this is like a kid-friendly project. It's a family kind of friendly project. It's just a good project because I designed it. Now, because it's cool. I don't know. This is my favorite time of year to like make stuff because it's like, I don't know, this time it's family. So now I'm going to stick this in here. See, I don't even have to put it right side out. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Like so. And this is where, see, I left about an inch right here. And y'all want to see how to make the loopy loop? I'm going to go ahead and guess yes. yes. We want to see the loop de loop. And also, quick question about the seam allowance on that cuddle fabric that you just had. Um, are you sewing a larger seam allowance so it's slightly yeah. smaller? Yes. On that one, I did a half inch seam allowance. And if we weren't on a time um, crunch, I would have probably trimmed it. And it's really important to do that, especially with this kind of fabric. Um, because I'm always like, why don't you just have a like a one eight seam allowance if that's what you want? But this is slippery, and really, I should have clipped it and pinned it because it was moving all over the place. But then, then you do need to trim it afterwards. So, it, whenever it says to do that, it's actually a, an important step, and I've learned that the hard way, probably about twelve times doing something. So, um, yay, Mr. Domestic Pro Tip. <laughs> <laughs> So now, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, and all I'm doing, see how I folded it in? Oh. There you go, yeah, look at that. And now I'm gonna fold it again. Okay. You can go use an iron and stuff if you want to. I'm not. I'm, I'm running wild, folks. And I just sewed it, like edge stitch it, eighth inch. And there it is. Isn't this what they do? The yeah, that's helpful, yes. Yeah. yeah, so now I'm gonna loop it on the back. Okay, oh, hey, let me come over here. That's so cool. That, see, this is what I love about live. You can do all this kind of stuff. See? Move the thread so that they don't like look fun. And then I'm gonna loop it like this like so see mm -hmm. so that this is a cute loop and not like a turn loop thanks for coming up close for that that was really helpful yay and then now you should probably clip it or sew it do as i say not as i do folks no we don't do that anymore <laughs> and then we're almost done are y'all sad I'm kind of sad. This has been a lot of fun. I know everybody's been having a blast watching along. So this is sewn, right? This is my seam ripper. This is a positive experience with the seam ripper. All I'm going to do is get in between here and pop one of those stitches. About an inch down. Do y'all want to see it? I think so. If this is going to be a positive experience with a seam ripper, yes. So can you see it? Just about, yeah. Okay, boop, that's it. I just popped it, enough to get a hole? Let me show you. Like that. Uh, yep. And that's what I'm gonna stick this loop through. Like this? Ah. So the loop is good to go. And now all I have left to do, like Tony's done. Thank you, Tony. Everyone say thank you, Tony. Excellent work, Tony. I take this. This is one inch. Yeah, this is one inch fabric tape. It's permanent. And I'm going to use this. And I'll show you. Don't worry. Wrap it around. Wrap it around. Wrap it around. Like so. Ooh, Beverly has a quick question about the minky. Did you use batting on the minky as well? I did not. I did not. No, you could. Like, if you had a gigantic one, you could. But the minky itself is already, like, buoyant. That's probably the wrong word. But, like, buoyant. And I've even, when I do minky-backed quilts, I don't always use batting there either. Sometimes I'll just have minky and then quilt top. 
and then quilt it for like a lightweight summer quilt and it's good to go because it's that like squishy. Is that the right word? Y'all know what I'm saying. The older I get, the more words I make up. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got, we're following your general gist. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So see how it's on here? And this stuff, you don't even have to heat set right away. I will after. And now I'm removing the paper. Like so. And then I'm going to do one half. Okay. Oh, we're getting a good question. Now that we're doing some close-ups here, Diane says her daughter wants to know your nail polish color. Okay, so it is um cuz cuz we moved we've elevated from piggy paint. So now I get the um the Insta Dry stuff. So it's whatever the gray Insta Dry is, but I for my own needs beyond my 7 and a half year old, I'm about to elevate. So I, was, <laughs> I but someone DM me and they they had these like things that you can put on your nails that are all like LGBTQ friendly. So my nails are about to be very gay very soon and I'm here for it. Yes. Yes. So if that's your thing, um, yay, there you go. If it's not, then you need to not tell people about that. <laughs> Grandma <laughs> Funk is asking a question about that fabric tape. What type of it that you just used? It's Aileen's fabric tape. A-L-E-E-N-E-S. I think it's fabric fusion tape. They have it in like half inch and one inch and I'm using one inch for here, but I love it. I use it as much as possible. I even used it. I'll show you. No one's ever seen this project because it was when I was in the finals of making it last year, which I never told anyone about, but I even used it for this and that's paper. And I used it to like affix it on there. So it's, um, it's durable. So here, there, and now I'm going to do the other half. Press it. Press it like a leaf press on nail since we're on the subject. <laughs> do they still make those? I don't even know. Oh, goodness. I would assume so. And there it is. There it is. There it is. See, and that was with um, with me talking the whole time. Like, that was a fun little project. Let me show you. Yeah. How this one looks a little cuter. Oh, fantastic. Now, we do have about 10 more minutes, give or take, for a few last minute questions. But first, I just wanted to see if there's any finishing touches that you wanted to talk about about this project as we're wrapping it up. Um, What I would do... If my iron was on, I mean, it, I just don't want to accidentally burn myself and scream or whatever. Like, I would heat press it low. I think this is a polyester fabric. I don't think it melts, but just in case, I'd be fearful. Just to heat set that fabric really good. In the event you ever wanted to wash it, you want to make sure it's set before you put it in the wash. And I would suggest hand washing this, not like any of the, like, easy stuff where you pop it in a machine and it's done in a couple days. All right. And Constance just popped in a question. Can you wash that? <laughs> it's like we were we were like linked or whatever at the same time. Exactly. Oh, Janet has a question about uh, putting together the lining. Can yeah. you use a serger to join the front to the back or put together the lining? Oh, yeah, that would be better. If you have a serger, absolutely. Anything that's like stretchy or like, a, a, once again, the wrong word, a viscous fabric that like moves a lot, like silk or satin, surge that stuff up because there's something about the serger and the feed dogs on the front and the top that it doesn't make it as slippery. I'm all about any kind of situation where I don't have to clip or pin. And that would be a situation where I didn't have to. <laughs> Save you a little bit of time there. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, piece of me has our next question here. Is the tape one and done? Or can you do a quick quick repositioning if it's not aligned correctly? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you just so you know. And that's the, the joy of me not heat setting it yet. Once it's heat set, it's good. But like, I could lift it up. See? Right there. Uh, okay. And then put it back. Because that, that will probably happen, especially with fur. Something will get in there that shouldn't be there. And then it's, it's good. So yeah, it's repositionable. Great, and that's how you secured your fur top there. 
Now, Nadine is curious, so you don't need to finish the ends of the minky, the edge? Me personally, no. You, I don't need to. You're good. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, you would if it were like, we're making a blanket with it or like apparel. I would probably, if I didn't have a serger, once I did the straight stitch, I would use one of those super stretch stitches. If you don't know the super stretch and you have it, a super stretch is like the lightning bolt one. Or there's one that goes this way, this way, this way, and then the next stitch, this way, this way, this way. Those are both for like stretchy fabrics. So I would use those two stitches for the straight edge. And then I would go back with a zigzag stitch around the edge once it's trimmed up, just to make sure that it doesn't fray and it's ting ting. But for this, um, anytime I make holiday stuff, if I'm not if I'm not gifting, I'm all about the maximum wow with the minimum work. And so that's another step that I don't think is necessary because it's already glorious. glorious. Maximum wow, minimum work. I like this. <laughs> I feel like that could also be merch, right? <laughs> We're a good team, Leah. Stick with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to take this one from Pauline next, but there are a lot of people out there that are curious about what's on the shelving behind you. So if you could talk just briefly about what you have in your area there. Do you knit? Do you crochet? What do you have back there behind you? Yeah, I do it all. Um, I What drives me to move to a project is whether or not it's something I don't know how to do. And that's what excites me. Um, the challenge of a new skill. And I really love projects that I don't think that I can do because that forces me to push it, push myself. And once you post that first picture on the interweb, you have to finish it. They'll hold you accountable, I've found. So yeah, that's that's what drives me. This past year, it's been about crochet. Next year, it's gonna be about knitting. Um, before that, it was quilting. Before that, it was fabric weaving. These right here are all fabric woven panels. Like, if you wanna see it. I weave the fabric strips and I know this is going to be a premium class that they've added or are adding because I filmed it right before the, sw the swap. So that's all it's a, let me get close. See? Oh, wow. It's woven. Love that technique. But then like, I just made these. Mm -hmm. I'm always making stuff always. And then these are all my quilt tops. This is crochet. Crochet, crochet. Those are patterns I need to write. Um, yarn. These are my fabrics. Those, so this is real. It's not a fake background. This is the one like ting ting area in my whole house. So this is where the camera points. <laughs> <laughs> well, people are very impressed with the organization back behind you. <laughs> Uh, Jessica also says it's good to know someone else has multiple scissors, seam rippers, and tweezers. They're going to call me a hoarder when I am gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then Diana has a question about what do you have on your wall that allows you to use the iron on it for the fusible? So when you were talking about working on the wall, what do you have that makes that possible for you? Um, as wall. That's uh, all right. I mean, should there be something behind it? I don't know. I To me, I feel like it's good because I'm not using high heat. The instructions for a fusible batting, it's like a low to medium heat, no steam. So for it to penetrate through the quilt top, the batting, and then the backing to do damage to the wall, if I just hold it there for three seconds, it's not doing that to my wall. But now that I found a wall that I want to do it for, I'm probably going to find... I don't know. I don't want to get wool. Yeah, maybe I'll get like wool or fleece or put it there or get like a large ironing pan, um, pad and make it and put it there. So everyone knows that's the wall that I do my, my um, basting and stuff on. But yeah, it's uh, to me, it's not, it's not um, hot enough to do damage to a wall, but like you need to follow the manufacturer's instructions and stuff. Cause like, <laughs> be very careful then I guess. Yeah, be careful. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to get to two more questions before we run out of time. The very first one, Ava is curious where that fun mug is coming from. This one. The internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I wish I knew. I bought, I'm that person that shops at like 930 as I'm falling asleep. Um, but if you 
create if you want to add I, i'll look it up and i'll have an answer for you because i know that since i've shown it people want to know because it's really a cute cup um but at this point i don't i don't remember but i'll find out for you for sure all right, well that actually leads right into what I was going to finish with. My last question, there were a couple people in the comments that are wondering where they can find you. Uh, they're loving this presentation and your energy and your joy, and so they want more of you. So where can they find that? I am everywhere. So I'm super active on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. And I have a Facebook group that is my favorite place on the whole interweb. Um, because that, I mean, of all of my spaces, I'm very adamant about making sure that it's an inclusive environment, which means that everyone's welcome unless your happiness is based on the oppression of someone else. And then I'll make you uncomfortable to where you leave because that's what I have to do to protect everybody else. Right. So that's, that's what that Facebook group is. Especially it's a little, it's a little niche on the interweb where everyone can breathe and feel safe and protected. And me being a queer man, um, I know what it felt like growing up not having that kind of safe space. So that's the, that's my most most important thing that about all of this. And then I just joined the TikTok. I joined the TikTok a week ago, Ooh. and like I have a video that overnight got a hundred thousand views already. I was like, what is that? So I love the TikTok. So if you're on the TikTok, come find me over there because that's fun, and I'm gonna get real extra over there. All right. And all of your socials are Mr. Domestic, right? Yeah, just so you know, it's spelled out M-I-S-T-E-R because the M-R is a cat. So if you don't want a cat and you want me, spell it out all the way. So you'll know very quickly if you have yeah. gotten the right yeah. Mr. Domestic. <laughs> all right. Well, that does it for us on questions. I am going to offer Matthew, if you have any final thoughts for the end of the event that you want to leave us with before I formally sign us off, this is your time. Yeah, everyone. Y'all are really awesome for coming. No, I mean, how do you, uh, there's so much like yuck out there. Um, that, that crafting and sewing and making is a space for not having the muck. It doesn't mean don't stand up for what's right. Cause I do, if you come to my spaces, know that I'm very adamant, vocal and loud about the things that are important to me. But this is an opportunity, even if it's with yourself. This is my safe space. Like crafting and making saved my life, saved my world before it. I didn't have direction, didn't have internal joy. And with it, I do. And that's something you can do all by yourself in your own little corner of whatever your, your home is. And if you're looking for community, it's everywhere on the interweb. You just have to show up and there's nothing but love and joy whenever you do. So yeah, happy holidays, everyone. Oh my goodness. That is such a fantastic way to close out our week. I love that sentiment. And I have to say thank you to everybody who has joined us during the past five days of Merry Making, our mini series. It has been a ton of fun. And I want to remind you that you can still don't download any of those free patterns and recipes from the entire mini series by clicking the link in the description. You can also scroll through the comments in the chat box as well. Our team has provided a link for those uh, materials too. I am Leah Zayner. I have been your moderator all week. I've truly enjoyed spending this time with you on behalf of Grover, <laughs> Mr. Domestic, and the entire team behind the scenes. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and enjoy your crafting. Bye, everybody.